Good day and welcome to today's webinar on PPM 9.4, how the new features of HPE PPM can help you help your PMO. Um, this broadcast is brought to you by HP Software, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And my name is Alvin Sumter. I'm the global manager at ThyssenKrupp Elevator in Atlanta. I'm also the PPM SIG leader and the Atlanta chapter um, leader. Um, just a little bit about myself. I've been working in the IT space for over 25 years in positions of development, quality assurance, testing, and IT governance. Uh, for the last six years, I've been devoted to HPE PPM in our organization. Um, here at ThyssenKrupp Elevators, I'm the QA manager, global QA manager, responsible for quality assurance, testing, change control board, and IT governance. And I'd like to introduce our, our speaker for today. We have Barbara Lewis, who is our PPM Technical Marketing Manager at HP Enterprise Software. Um, Barbara has been working in the enterprise software for over 25 years um, in positions of training, pre-sales, and marketing. Uh, she started off as a trainer for customers uh, for then title IT Governance soft Software as you kind of know that PPM used to be called ITG. Um, of the last 10 years, she's been voted to um, PPM. Um, in her next position, over the years, she has done software pre-sales, and during that time, Barbara's been focused on mostly PPM and integration to other HPE applications. Uh, most recently, Barbara has moved to the role of Technical Marketing Manager at HPE uh, for the Portfolio Project Management Tool. Just some housekeeping notes. Uh, this is a live recorded session today. All recordings will be available to all Vivid members. We'll also have a Q&A session at the end of our demo today and our, our speech. Um, you, and you can use the control panel to mute and unmute to use uh, sending your chat questions. And with that, we'll uh, turn it over to Barbara uh, for our talk today. Well, thank you. This is Barbara Lewis, and I am with HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and we're going to be talking about the new features in PPM 9.40 that was released last week. And as we've had through all of our iterations of PPM, and prior to that, ITG, we've got our dashboards that give visibility into the integrated set of capabilities that we offer, which encompass portfolio management, project management, program, resource, and all those other things that make up a comprehensive PPM application for managing your projects and portfolios. And that all sits on top of the platform that we call the foundation. And this is another very familiar screen or slide that you've seen. The only real differences are, number one, the colors. We have the HPE colors. And number two, we have highlighted, or I have highlighted, through the orange squares, the different areas where we have primary differences in earlier versions of PPM to what we've just released with PPM 9.40. And most of the investment that we have made in PPM is around program management, agile management, and user administration. And we're going to cover those different topics in this order. So this kind of gives you a roadmap of where we're going in this hour. The other thing we're going to do is, after the slide deck, give you a demonstration. So first off, with program management, we're now providing a complete auditable program governance process you have the ability now to create program request types and workflows. That gives you, the customer, the opportunity to completely detail what it takes to approve a program, 
the different people involved in it. And when you do that, that request type, those workflows, are used by a program type. This is used exactly the same way as you're familiar with when we talk about a pro uh, I'm sorry, a project type. So you create the program type, you use the program request type and workflow, and then you create settings for the different types of programs you have. Some features that are nice with this are that once this program type is in place, you can view what programs are using it. Obviously, you have the opportunity to enable or not enable the program type. And some of the settings can be locked down by the PMO, the Program Management Office, so that the program manager cannot change them creating consistency across the different programs that use this program type. Now looking at the different type settings, the program type settings, one of the biggest ones or the areas you have are the program health settings. Now in the past we have offered the ability to track issue risk and scope change health. And they were all based on the member projects. Well, now we have this also for the program. And a brand new feature is this, that we automatically calculate the health for the overall program. Now, you can turn that calculation off or keep it or turn it on. And we'll show you that in a screenshot in just a couple slides. But this is a key feature now, that we have that overall program calculation. Now let's take a look at some of the features you're going to see on the new program interface. You've got a project or a program header. You've got a lot of detailed program information. Now what you're seeing in this particular screenshot is that you do have a more button. And that is displayed, or the contents of that more button, is displayed right here. So you have a consistent look and feel between a program overview and a project overview. Believe it or not, we have taken much of this overview page that you're seeing for programs, and that has now been carried over into the project area. Now, we're not going to focus on projects today, but be aware that that look and feel, that impact that you're seeing is now also on the project page. So let's look at a specific part of the overview header. Now we're looking at just the summary program information. Now the text tells you how we calculate all these things, but it gives you a complete progress indicator, the duration of your program based on the earliest and latest. You also have this status. And the status is derived directly from the workflow that supports your project type. So all of that is in a very simple, easy to read and view interface. And here's that slide I promised you a moment ago. What you're seeing here are the health indicators. These are true summary indicators. Now we've called out here where we're not calculating the overall prog program health. We are calculating the issue risk and scope change health, but not the individual or overall program. So it tells us that. It's user selected. But that's very different from overriding a calculated health. 
So in this bottom screenshot that you're seeing, we have a calculated health. However, the program manager has overridden it, but it's very specific in the duration of that override. And you're always aware of when that override will expire. Now, anytime you click any of these particular indicators, you're going to be taken to the section in the overview page that corresponds to that. Finishing out the program header, you're going to see an area that summarizes the financials. So financials here, we're seeing the actual cost. And down here, we're keeping the program manager or anyone who's involved completely informed on if there are updates pending to the financial information. And finally, over here, that's what this last bullet is covering. It's a warning icon. And it tells you that if one, the cost and or budget is negative, it's going to give you that warning sign. Just gives you some visual indicators. Now let's get a little bit deeper into these changes on the program. We've totally changed this interface. So it's much easier to use and gives you so much more information that can be used. So here we're looking at the overview page. We've got a details, user data. Now user data, we're not going to cover here. But that's where if you have to add company or organization specific information to your program, that will show up on your user, user data tab. We're going to look at timeline, cost, and finally the notes and references we're not going to look at today because they are exactly the same as what you have experience with when we talk about projects. So here we're looking at the content. Up here, lists all the different things that can be a member of your program, and membership is still any life cycle entity within PPM. That means proposals, projects, or assets. Then we have a listing of issues, risks, and scope changes. One thing that's happening is see where we have on this particular item, the issues, a green add button. What that means is that in the program type, we defined the exact issue form that should be used for this program. So when I click Add, it knows exactly which issue form to bring and present to me. Down here for Risks, it has not been defined, and that's why the Add button is not active. One other thing to be very aware of that's hugely useful, at least in my mind, is here where you're seeing the charts. I can click on one of these elements in the charts. So in risks, we've got two dimensions. We've got the certainty of the risk happening and the impact of that. So or so what we can do is click on, say, that it's high impact and almost certain. That will filter the list in the table. And once I do that, I will have the filters defined above the table. So I know exactly what I'm looking at. And I can easily, from that position, eliminate the filter I applied. One thing to be aware of is that the, any filter and sorting options that you've applied during this session or view are not saved. So if you leave the program page, go to something else, 
and come back, you're going to see the total charts. Now we're at the Program Details tab. What you're going to see first is that the program status is from the workflow. And that is something that is not done for projects. So be aware of that. But we do do this for programs. And the default fields that you see here are so that we can do our upgrades. All of those fields from existing programs that you have are going to be documented in the base field group for a program request type. And what that does for you is it makes sure that you have a good upgrade. From there, you have the ability to add any fields for documentation that you need for your organization. It has all of the flexibility and power that you're used to for any request type. Now, here's a part that anybody who's seen the preview or the beta of PPM actually loves this, and that is the program timeline. What it does is it consolidates the milestones from any member project and then also allows you to add milestones at the program level. Let's go to the next slide. This slide now shows you how you add those milestones at the program level. You just give it a name, whether it's a major or minor, anticipated finish date. We can populate the actual finish date when it's done and the owner. And you can add more as needed. But this now gives you, as a program manager, complete visibility into how the member projects are tracking against milestones and even the program against its milestones. And cost. You can't get away from cost. So here we have a lot of the same interface that you have experienced before with PPM and programs. You have access to the program level financial summary. You have access to any of the financial summaries of any member lifecycle entity. Now right here we're only showing projects, but there also includes or it also includes the assets and proposals. Down here, which is sequential, how it displays on the page, is the earned value section. Now this only applies to projects. And the same is true for the current cost metrics, where we display the Schedule Performance Index, and the Cost Performance Index, CPI and SPI. So that's really the big changes programs. And you can see there's a lot of changes in the program area. But we're going to switch gears and go to Agile Management and our integration with Agile Manager for HPE. So what we've done first which is, you know, it seems small, but it is really big. We've included it out of the box. You no longer have to go out to HPE Live Network and download the code, install it. It's there. It's out of the box. So when you go into the administrative area where you configure the integrations, you're able to immediately configure the version 2.0 connector for Agile Manager. Now this particular slide kind of summarizes very simplistically the changes. Now down here we have what was available in previous versions. That we can synchronize release information to the work plan in PPM and Agile Management timesheet information. What we've added is the ability for PPM to send, yes, send to Agile Manager, 
release information. We can now create a release in Agile Manager. So here's another summary of what's available for project managers in this integration. You have the ability to create a release from PPM into Agile Manager. You have now, and this is huge, options and what should be synchronized back from Agile Manager to PPM. We're going to look at that in just a couple slides. We get improved information documentation about Agile start-finish information. And we've given you the ability to have accurate estimated remaining effort for those external tasks. Now for the team members, the people working on your Agile projects, well, what's going to happen is we have the ability to now track that effort on a per day basis. In the past, we would take the effort, bring it in, and divide it evenly across all work days. Well, that's not real life. Now we take it on a per day basis. Now, in order to get some of this new information and more accurate information in PPM from Agile Manager, we're leveraging many of their APIs. And in order to leverage those APIs, we have to have some additional information from Agile Manager. And that is what we're calling and getting here. We're getting the client ID and the client secret from Agile Manager. So when you define the integration at the administrative level for PPM, you will need to go over to Agile Manager in the configuration area and integrations and create a new client ID. When you do that, you're going to get this screen and when you say OK, this is what you're going to get. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't read the screen. That's a bad thing in this case. So people who are familiar with PPM and not Agile Manager need to know that you need to take note of this client ID and the client secret. Because once you close this window, you will not have access to that ID and secret again. You'll have to recreate. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. But it's much easier if you take note and then transcribe it immediately and you've got your integration in place, you're good to go. Now, in a work plan, so we've moved over, we've got our initial integration in place at the system level. Now we're at an individual work plan. And we're going to integrate with Agile Manager. Well, We've got to still put in our username and our password, and we're going to put in some additional information now, the domain, the project workspace. But what we're showing here is what we need to put in to create a new release. We've got to give it a name. A description is optional, but a start and end date. And the sprint duration unit. So all of that is required when you're going to create a new release. Once that release is created, it's going to use some other information that you've configured. It's just not what we're highlighting on this particular slide. Let's go to the next one. Here is where we start defining all the information that we can define in the integration. So first, the workspace. We're used to that. We've done it forever. Well, at least as long as we've had the integration. The release. If you're creating one, you had to name it. If you're connecting to one, you choose it. Here, again, it's the sprint information. 
If you're connecting, you want to get that information. Or what happens is once you've created a release, the sprint information will come over to PPM based on the level of details that you've defined that you want to come over. So in this particular case, we've now given you, this is a wonderful thing, we've given you the fact that you can choose the level of detail to come over. You can choose everything, which is what we send today. Or when I say today, I mean previous versions. Or you can get just the sprint only information without all the user stories. Or you can get the release total information only. So now you have a lot of choices in how detailed the information is that comes from Agile Manager into PPM. Keeping in mind, now I've only talked about Agile Manager. We do offer a software development kit to integrate PPM with other Agile development tools. The same features will be available for that. And here is a slide I'm not going to cover. I'm not going to sh go with the details. You will have access to this particular slide deck once we're done. It tells you how we compute those scheduled start, actual start, actual finish dates. So this is great documentation, and I thought it was important to include. The same is true here for when we look at the estimated remaining effort and estimated finish dates. This is great documentation. You can get this from the deck once this is posted to the Vivid website. And one of the final release informations that we have for the integration between Agile Manager and PPM is the timesheet integration. So now when we go in and we go to get external items from Agile Manager, it will bring everything in on a per hour basis per day. Now, there is one prerequisite or precondition, and that is the timesheet policy must be in days and hours. And that's not a hard thing to do, but it makes things much more accurate for any reporting you want to do. Finally, let's take a look at the last major area of change in this release that obviously you can put to use use immediately, and that is our user management console. What this allows you to do is through your browser, whether it's Net Explorer, Chrome, or Firefox, doesn't matter. You can now do almost every function of user administration from your browser. You don't have to load the workbench. This is huge, and you're going to find that we've kept this in the same look and feel as our other applications delivered by HPE. So you're seeing the list, and you have, once you've highlighted a particular use, summary information, and you can edit from here. You can view or edit users. You can create them, copy, use the filter functionality right here. You can also enable and disable users. And when we say edit, that includes the ability to assign or remove from security groups. So this is a much nicer UI and makes you much more productive in your user management. And that is all that I have as far as slides. So now what I want to do is go into a short demo. So I'm going to go ahead and escape out of my slideshow and go to my
system. And I'm going to log in under demo system for PPM. Hopefully you can see that by now. And I'm going to log in as the program manager. And I'm only going to really look at the program information in this demo. So you're seeing there is some UI changes to do the rebranding to HEE. So I have the green status bar and all of that. So I'm going to go into this particular program. And you're seeing this dynamic UI we've created. And this is a user selected health. Remember, that means that we're not calculating the health of this particular program. And we, I'm going to go ahead and click on the issues. Take me immediately to that section over Down here, it's showing us our risks, issues, and scope changes. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the likely risks with medium impact. That immediately changed my table and showed me the filter that I've applied. If I X that, it goes away. Now that is something that's very useful for focusing in on things that you want to manage by exception. All right. So details, we've kept this at just the minimum of what we did for the upgrade. So when this comes and populates the page, what you're going to see is only those fields that were existing prior to the upgrade. You can now add any other fields, sections, information that you need for your particular program. Timeline. You're seeing all the different elements in this particular program with their milestones. Now, when I hover over one, it's going to tell you the details of those milestones. Oh my, just different colors. Let's scroll down. We have a very good legend that exceptionally details what you're viewing and seeing on this particular page. And it's visible only by month at this stage. You know, if I add a milestone, and we're just going to keep it right at all the other defaults, and I say add. Right there is now my program level milestone. Shows me exactly where I'm at, too, as far as in the entire sequence. So you're seeing all of that. Now I'm going to quick sign out and sign in as administrator real quick. And yes, I saved my passwords because that simplifies logging in for demos. I'm going to go to Open, Administration, User Management Console. So you can see this User Management Console that we have. Now it's going to take a minute for it to bring up all the information. I've got lots of different users. When I highlight a user, that's when it changes to show the basic information and I click the pencil to edit information. I can now change any information here about this particular user, including licenses and security group memberships. This makes life so much easier for your admins who manage user accounts. But with that, I'm going to go back to my slide deck and go back to presenter mode. 
and bring back to a couple things here. And that is that Vivid and HPE are going to be in Discover London. Those dates are November 29th to December 1st. But before we get into those details, I want to ask Alvin if he could bring up questions and let me know what questions have come about in or throughout this particular session so that I can start answering some of those. Wasn't that a great presentation? I uh, want to thank Barbara for uh, being with us today to uh, give us a nice sneak peek into what's coming with the new version 9.4 of PPM. Um, so we have a few questions, and um, let's let's go through a few of the questions. So Barbara, here's the first question: um, Are the other modules like resource management completely out of scope for this release? Not even bug fixes? Um. There's going to be some bug fixes that are in there. We have to focus because of limitations on the major things that we have changed. Now, I will tell you that, yes, there's bug fixes, and the best documentation for that is in the release notes for PPM 9.40. Great. Um, we have another question about the program manager. Um, it asks, will the program manager field only list users with program manager security group and licenses? Yes. So that part of it, when we talk about security, has not changed. So the program interface and the, the ability to view things for programs is still limited by the license and then the access grants that an individual has. So yes. Okay. Uh, we have a number of questions about the, the user management console, so let's, let's take a few of those. Um, okay. The first is, is there a limitation on the number of user-defined fields? Now, the user-defined fields, I'm hoping you mean for user data in the user management console, and user data is limited to 20 fields, and that is one of the limitations in the user management console. User data cannot be managed through that new browser UI. So that is one of the limitations in the new UI for user management console. The other major limitation is that if you have extensions to PPM, for instance, the Oracle eBusiness Suite. That cannot be managed within the new user interface. Okay, great. Uh, we have a couple of questions about some of the features or the uh, applications in the user management, and I'll, I'll combine these two because they are very similar. Um, is it possible to use the user admin console for user data as well as updating workflows are creating workflows? You still need to go into the workbench for workflows and user data. Okay. Um, here's another question for user uh, management. Uh, in the admin console, can you filter by the last login date, and then can you disable more than one user at a time from the new web-based page? Oh, good questions. I don't know. Oh, okay. If we so have we time, can... I will go. Um, if you'll save that, what happens is I can test that very easily, and we can add that answer to when this gets published to the website. Okay, and we can do a follow up with the user after our session today with that. Sure. Um, sure. Um, here are a couple more on the on the program management. Um, do we have a work plan on the new program program project type? Not yet. I know people are asking for that, but that just was not in scope for this release. I will tell you that we are looking at further expanding the capabilities with program management. There's no timeline I can give you for when, if, all the other details. I would love to be able to do that, but I can't. Um, 
So no work plan for programs yet. Okay. Uh, here's another for the program form. Um, if, will we be allowed to track time at the program on the program form? Um, you'll be able to do that. Well, that's another one I have to research. What my thought process is is that on a request type, which a program is now, we can enable resources and the resources can apply time to that request type. It would not be the same as applying time to a project. It would be the same as what we have today for applying time to a request type. But I would have to test that to try and see how that works. Okay, great. Another um, program question, is there a way of only showing the risks and the issues on the program form, on the overview? What you would do is not track the scope changes, and when you don't track it, it doesn't show up. Okay, great. A um, lot of good questions coming in. Um, we have one, um, our Vivid user always thinking out of the box. Um, one of the questions we have here is, can we integrate with JIRA with all the available features for Agile Manager integrations? Um, I will tell you, once that software development kit is released, it is not released yet. It should be released within the next 30 days. Uh, a key word there is should. Um, we can never guarantee delivery dates, and I apologize for that, but things just happen. Um, but once we release that software development kit for the integration between PPM and other Agile tools, yes, you should have the same functionality. And Barbara, um, one of the questions came in from the users as most of our audience is wanting to know, when will the 9.4 be released? It was released last week on the 29th of September. So if you are on maintenance, you can go to software, uh, I'm sorry, softwaresupport.hpe.com and download it as part of your support contract. Okay, great. So it's already available to all of our customers uh, that are using PPM. Yes. yes. Um, also another program question. Um, today uh, in program manager field, um, it displays all users. So will this be re resolved with the upgrade? I'm not sure I understand the question. So um, when you're adding or looking at the program manager field, it displays all of the users that are program managers. Uh, will that just be limited to just the, the user that is the program manager? Um, you know what, I don't know. I would have to look into that a little bit more. Okay, all right, great. Um, let's see, we have some more questions here. Um, one of the questions is, is the timeout configurable for the HPM and the workbench? I believe it is. I have gone yes. through recently and looked at all the different server configuration parameters, and I believe there is a parameter that will apply a timeout so that when you're connected to, to the workbench that it will then close that connection. Okay. And um, here are a couple of others that just come in. Um, is there a limitation on the number of custom fields that can be added to the program form, or is there a limitation on the number of projects per program? I don't know of any limitation in the number of projects per program. And in the request type for a program, you have the same limitations that you do for any request type. That means in the header, you're limited to 50 user-defined fields. And then when you go to the details section, you can have increments of 50. By default, the system limits you to 200, but you can change that limit. So 
effectively, there's no limit to the number of fields that you have on the request type, but I would hope that you don't go beyond 200 fields or 250 between the header and the details section. That's a lot of fields. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have another question around program as well, um, and this is one I thought about. On the timeline that you showed program management, are all those field, all the manually entered milestones, are they tied to the work plan or can they be tied to the work plans for an associated project? All right. What happens on the timeline tab is we automatically bring in any milestones defined in the project work plan. So those, that's where the source of record is for those milestones. Now, when I manually create a milestone, that is at the program level. So no, it does not get associated with an individual project. In any milestones you see listed on the lines for individual projects, those must be edited in the system of record for the um, project. I'm sorry, I had a, a, a little bit of a blind spot in my brain. Okay. Uh, here's another question um, about the filters. Um, can you save your filters rather than losing them when you go back? Um, this was when you demoed the risk and the issues. Um, no, unfortunately those filters, but they're so easy to apply that it's not normally for most people a big issue that they don't save those. It helps you to focus, so the intent is to give you a summary and then you focus in to where the problems are. Okay, great. Uh, one question around licensing for 9.4. Um, many of us, when we upgraded to 9.3, we went through a major licensing key change. <laughs> yes, um, you did. <laughs> <laughs> are there any, um, any of those with 9.4 as well? Nope. All licenses that you currently have will be good and maintained. Okay. And um, I'll just ask from a licensing standpoint, um, what is the, the, the path for to go to 9.4? Do you need to start at 9.3 or can you start with previous versions? No, nope. um, we have maintained the, the standard that we've had for a while. You do need to upgrade to each major version. So if you're at 9.2, any version of 9.2, you need to go to 9.3, any version of 9.3, and then upgrade to 9.4. Great. Um, here's another licensing question. Um, in the new version of 9.4, can we only give program management license to a user or both as previous version program and project management? You would need to have both program and project. That, okay. that requirement has not changed. Here's another question about the base package. Um, as we have you, as you've done a lot of improvements in the 9.4, how about performance compared to 9.3? They always do some performance enhancements under the covers, but I can't detail any of those off the top of my head. So that's something that would need to be taken potentially to the support forum that we have when we go to community.hpe.com. There is a support community there, and I do know the person who heads up our support for PPM is very active on that community, and he may be able to help you a little more than I can. Okay, great, great. Um, here's one question about the integrations uh, with AGM and other integration. It says, if AGM is uh, out of the box, does this mean if we have HPE PPM, then will you have AGM? Currently, we do not use AGM. No, we don't give you licenses to the software of Agile Manager. You have to have that. And then we give you the integration capability at no additional cost. 
great, great. Um, here's a question around the dashboards and program management. Can those dashboards uh, be exported to Excel? Parts of them. Um, exactly which parts I'd have to go back and look and I know I have our, our discover slides up. I, what I'd like to do is take maybe three more questions and then go back so that we can give some focus to what Vivid does to help support HPE as well. Um, so let's take about three more questions please. Okay, great, great. Um, we have one question here. Can you search by project number when um, add tasks to timesheets? Yes. Okay. Great. And here, um, I'm going back to the uh, the milestones um, on the program. If you you connect milestones between projects, will you see these connections on the program time view? No. We haven't gotten quite that sophisticated yet. We would like to get there, but it's not that sophisticated yet. Okay, great, great. Um, and There's the last some question, great questions. I'm loving them. Yeah. Um, and the last question that we'll take today is, are the program manager dashboard portlets available to pull in for use to understand project help? Um, I'm a little confused on the focus of that. So the you have the programmation and they want to bring that into project. Is there a way we can um, clarify that one? Sure. It, it, I think the understanding is that in the dashboards for program management, mm -hmm. um, there are portlets that are available. So are there, I think, are there any new new portlets or are there any enhanced portlets to understand the project health other than what was shown within program management? There are some dashboard portlets that have been enhanced. I don't have all the particulars. I apologize, but I don't have all the particulars for those. But I do know there are two or three new and enhanced portlets that are available for dashboards. Okay, great. Thank you, Barbara. Um, that's all the time we have for questions today. Um, just want to kind of reiterate and thank Barbara. Well, first, thank Barbara for her time and uh, giving us a great presentation and also a demo and drive of the new HP PPM. Um, just want to remind you of Discover. Um, it's going to be in London in this year in December. Um, it'll it'll give you an opportunity to join all of your friends and colleagues, uh, IT executives, architect, engineers, and partners, and innovators around the, around the globe, um, you know, this will help you accelerate your digital transformation journey um, at your organization and also help you explore and deliver some seamless experiences um, around governance, uh, around all the HP different tool sets. So looking forward to seeing you in, de in December, November 29th through December the 1st in London. Um, and if you need, need a more reason why to attend, here are our top 10 reasons why you should attend Vivid. Um, I'm sorry, attend Discover. Um, and just remember that Vivid is a huge supporter of HP Discover, and we'll have a booth uh, where you can learn more information about Vivid. Um, so please join us at uh, in Discover in London, and come and see us um, at, our, at our booth that we'll have there. Um, just want to thank you for taking your time um, to be with us today. Um, there's a short survey um, that is at the following link, um, and there's an opt-in information for more information from HPE. I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for Barbara and Vivid for hosting, um, hosting this webinar today. You guys have a great day, and our gift back to you is five minutes on your day. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Bye-bye.